Hi everyone and welcome back to our wall running series. In the last episode we actually got our wall running feeling pretty good. So in this episode we're going to focus more on the visuals. And specifically I want to have the hands come out from the player based upon which wall we're on. So let's take a look at how we might achieve that. So I'm thinking the best way to do this would probably be a blend space. As that allows us to blend between poses relatively easy. So first of all, I need to set up the poses for the animation. So I'm going to go to my first person animation arms. And let's go for the walking or running uh, forwards one. So it's my running forwards. And that's not too bad. Uh, but actually, I'll need the falling. That's what I actually want. There we go. Okay, so I want to have the hand outstretched against the wall here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an additive layer to the arms. So what I'm going to do is make duplicates of this, first of all. So I'm going to go and let's go to the folder. And we'll duplicate that. And we'll change that to be wall one right. And we'll duplicate it again for wall one left. So I'm going to go into wall one left. And this is going to put the left hand out. So I'm going to go to skeleton tree, find my bones, and I'm just going to add an additive layer to this. So to do a layer, we're just going to add a key for the whole arm here. So I'm going to go to the arm, to the hand, add key. And I'm just going to reposition it like so. And by just rotating the bones. You don't want to translate them, you just want to rotate them. I'm thinking like an outstretched hand like that. Might be okay. Let's uh, bring that in a bit. I'm just going to twist the hand there like that. Okay. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to select all the bones I've moved, upper arm, lower arm, and hand, and choose key. Make sure that your playhead's at the start of this. And so our movement now looks like this. Okay. Obviously, if you're a wall running animation already, that shows a lot of work doing this stuff. But temporarily, this should be just fine. Okay. Okay. Next up, we've got the other arm so let's go do that to the other arm and going to select the three bones I'm going to be moving key them at the start here and we're going to move them around something like that yeah I set the whole feet hit the key again again making sure that your playhead here is at the start of this so there's our animation for that okay next up we are going to create a blend space between these two nodes so let's go into our animation and we'll do a blend space. You can use this blend space or you can use a legacy one directional one. It doesn't really matter because we're only going to do it in one direction anyway. I'm going to go to legacy and just use one direction. We we'll choose our skeleton for our arms. And we'll call this one falling. Okay, so on the asset details, we're going to specify the horizontal axis. And we'll do this as a uh, wall run direction. And the value is going to go between minus one and one. And we'll turn snap the grid on. So we've got falling, which should be in the middle. And then I've got our poses, wall run left and wall run right. So as I wall run, I can go either way like that. And it'll blend the shapes for me. Cool. 
So now I'm going to go to the animation blueprint. So I can click on a little orange button at the top right here, and it'll take me to the animation blueprint for this skeleton. And I'm going to go find my falling uh, part, which I think is in this jump loop, FPP jump loop. Yep. And I'm going to replace the basic animation with our blend space animation. And by default, it would look exactly the same. So what we need to do is we need to feed this a value based upon if we're wall running. So I'm going to take this out and we're going to promote that to a variable and go to the event graph. And what we need to do is grab the the wall running and whether or not we are wall running first of all, and then determine which way we are wall running in. So let's do that on here. So I'm going to go to my update animation and we'll just add another new sequence onto here, make it easier. I'll tell you what, actually, we'll do it with the is valid one down here. That'd be better. Uh, and I think it'd be better because the first person character, this will only happen if the first person character reference is correct. And that's important because the stuff we want to reference is on the first person character. So from there, we're going to do and search for our is wall running boolean we made last time. And that's going to go into a branch. And because we only want to do this if the value is uh, true. Okay. If it's false, we want to set the wall run direction to zero. Okay. Now I need to find out what wall I'm running on which side of. So I'm going to go to my functions. And we're going to do detect wall while running. And what we're going to do is we're going to do two line traces, one to the left and one to the right of the character. And we're going to work out which side the character is on. So let's start off with our sequence node, because we're going to be two in two of them. And the first one we're going to do is going to be a line trace by channel. And the start position here will be get actor location oh, of our reference first. There you go. Get actor location and to start and in the end I'm going to go to the right vector of this so <clears throat> we get the actor right vector multiply that by a distance and this wants to be at least the size of your capsule because your capsule will bump against the wall so we can convert that to a float and I'm going to put in a value of 100 just to be safe and we're going to add these two together our endpoint and that's going to do a line trace out to the right if I want to do one to the left I'm going to take this copy it but instead of multiplying by 100 I'm going to multiply by negative 100 <clears throat> and that will now go to the left okay so if this is returning true that means I've hit a wall so I'm going to put in a branch and if it's true I'm going to set our wall run direction here to one and we're going to, to return the function returning means it will just execute and finish the function early so it will just do it here and won't do then one and i'm going to copy that and bring it back down here for the other direction and um, but this time the value is going to be negative one again with that return node there Now I'm going to go back to my event graph and we're going to put our function detect wall while running. Okay, so shall we test that out and see if that's working? Might be hard to see. I think our arms are invisible as well. Let's make our arms visible. <laughs> um, so our arms are as part of our character here, but I'm going to guess they've been told to not render. So let's go down to the rendering section. Uh, so it's visible. Yep, hidden games off, which is good. So next thing I'm going to check is the ownership. And we've got uh, only owner C. Um, they should be seen by us then. We should be able to see that. We'll give it a shot. Well, it should be. It says it's viewable. I might put that arms out further ahead of us. Let's just bring that a bit more. At least while we're testing this out. 
You can see the arm going out there. Let's go over here. So it is doing it, it's just hard to see because of the first person point of view. So we may need to adjust the animation to make it a bit more obvious what's going on. So let's do that. So I'm going to bring the arms back as they were. And we're going to go into the animation blueprint again for the arms. And I'm just going to go to my all in loop. And I'm going to transform the bones to move forwards a bit more. So, actually, no, I won't do that. What I'll do is we'll go into the actual poses and bring them a bit more forwards. So bring it right to the front. And this one's the left one. So let's go left arm. In this case, I'm going to break the arm a bit. I'm just going to move it out. It'll stretch it and look weird. But... In our point of view, it might look okay. So hit key, save that, right, arm. Key, save that. Right, let's see what that's like now. I have to really, really bring it forward. Let's do that. <laughs> let's bring it really forward. So let's go to wall on right. I'm going to bring that even more forward like that. So it's going to look goofy, but say only from this viewpoint. And wall on left. Oh, key. Don't forget the key. And. That again, still being rubbish. Hang on, let's take a look what's going on here. Make sure, yeah, it's going out. We should be able to see that, surely. Not the camera's not that far away. Let's move the arms forward again. I think it is doing it. It's just off the screen a bit more. I need to bring it closer to the camera. So that's fine. We can do that. So it will look weird, but we'll make it work. So in this one, I'm going to take the upper arm R. And in fact, I'll do the clavicle. We've done the clavicle. So I'm going to move that in like this and key that. And go to the left, the clavicle L, and bring that in like that. Key that. Okay, and let's see what that's like. I don't get why it's looking so weird and when I have the arms back here. Let's just bring it forward again to the test and see what's going on. Okay, so one thing I want to do then is I'm going to check to see if this is actually output in the correct one direction. So let me just go into my event graph and I'm just going to print string the wall one. Because I've got a sneaking suspicion that's just staying at... Oh, yeah, it's going to negative one. Why are we looking so weird then? 
Let's have a look. What's going? What was going on here? Uh, oh, it's because I put in the rifle falling. That's why. Silly me. Put it back on. It's a rifle version. I don't want to go into rifle. I want to go into the normal state machine. There's my problem. There we go. Put it in here. Now you watch. All the additions I've made won't look right. Yeah. <laughs> it goes out. Uh, yeah, so let's um, move that back. It's not too bad with the changes I did. That one's a bit bad. Can't get up this damn thing. Okay, let's just undo some of that work we did on the stretching. So I'm just going to get rid of the clavicle movement. So let's delete the key there. On the left, delete that key there. Um, I might just rotate it a little bit more in like that in your upper arm. Oh, I'm one. Okay. Right, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so the little delay you're seeing at the start of the animation coming in is because it's still doing the first initial animation of the starting to jump. And I want it to be a bit more snappier than that. So what you can do is you can go to the animation blueprint yet again. And if I go to our state machine over here, the jump start animation is going to play and this has been told to automatically go across when the time remaining is less than 0.1. So I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to check whether or not I'm wall running. So if I'm wall running, it's going to go straight into that. So I need to make a or node. And I'm going to promote that to a variable is wall running. And actually, rather than doing that, we could just do, I just thought of a better way of doing it. We can just take the wall run direction and say if this is not equal to zero. But if that's not equal to zero, that means we're wall running. So we'll put that in there. Okay, and that should make it initially go into that animation pose straight away, rather than waiting for the jump start to finish. There you go. So I just need to fine tune those movements. So there's poses and then you'll be all right. Um, obviously, if you have your own animations already, great. You don't have to worry about making your own poses. But there you go. So there you go. We've made a wall running system and showed you how you can start messing about the animation of this too and detect that left and right wall differences other things you may want to do is maybe you don't want to tilt the camera a little bit by doing a camera modifier um you can do like sparks or other things or like sounds when you're grabbing the wall as well and i want you to see if you can do that so have a crack at trying to do that yourself if you really can't do it and you're really struggling please leave a comment below and uh see if anyone else can help you out with that otherwise if i see no one able to help you out with it i'll put out a video explaining how to do the tilt of the camera and things like that but if you like this video and you want to see more of my content early before anyone else, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members once again for subscribing to the channel and supporting us. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.